Hello ellipticals. I know I promised you a real vlog, but this isn't it. It's... You see, I've been... Holy shit! Dot, you ready to go? In a moment! Actually... We already put the Brian, come on, come here! Come here! No, this no, isn't, this isn't the way to the door, but... Brian! I have reservations. This is gonna be fun. Lipticals, Brian's here. He's gonna help out with today's vlog. Can't we do the second match of all? I can't do mini golf right now. This is just too... too... exciting. What's so exciting? Kurt Girdle. The incompleteness guy? Oh, so much more than that. He's a genius. Mm. He he was a genius. He starved to death in the 70s. He what? He was really paranoid that someone was going to poison his food, and so he starved to death. But I just realized, we can't start with Girdle. No, first, we have to vlog about Einstein. Then we can vlog about Girdle. Of course. Penelope. Oh, are you kidding me? I mean, you probably should do. Brian, what do you know about Einstein? Damn it, Jim. I'm a programmer, not a physicist. Um, he was a genius. Hmm? Yes, and? Uh, he worked in a patent office, right? Mm-hmm. And? He came up with uh, the theory of relativity. Oh, and E equals MC squared. Yes. Whatever that means. Not really a good physics. Oh, oh, and um, he, uh, I know a quote by him. He said, um, <clears throat> we're all geniuses, but if you judge a fish by its tree climbing ability, you'll think it's stupid. Hmm? Not a real quote. It's not. No. Well, I mean, it's real, obviously. Plenty of people have said it, but... Einstein never did. That's disappointing. Quotes are dream killers. Never trust them. But let's go back to E equals MC squared. That comes from Einstein's theory of special relativity. Uh, do you want me to ask you about this? That would be helpful, yes. Uh, <clears throat> please explain special relativity. It was Einstein's way of trying to make Newtonian mechanics square up with James Clerk Maxwell's equations of electromagnetism. Mm -hmm. That sounds complicated. That's because it is. So, the problem was, Maxwell's equations were very useful. Most of the time, they predicted electromagnetic fields. But, under certain circumstances, they fall apart. That is, if you assume we're living in the universe that Isaac Newton described. When you go through the world, you think of space as fixed. There's forward and backward, left and right, and up and down. And unless Brian or I moves in one of those directions, then the distance between us stays the same. And then, separately, there's time. And time is the same for everyone. We move forward at one second per second. That's space and time according to Sir Isaac Newton. But in 1905, Einstein comes in and says, what if it's not space and time? What if it's space time? What if when Brian's moving away from me, he's not just changing our distance in space, he's changing our distance in time? What if three seconds for me isn't the same as three seconds for him? It turns out, if that's the case, then Maxwell's equations perfectly predict real-world electromagnetic measurements. Say the line. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Um, so if that's special relativity, is there an unspecial relativity? Why, Brian, that's such a useful question. It's almost as if I told you to ask it. See, the theory of special relativity isn't called special because of how awesome it is. Although it is awesome. Mm -hmm. It's special because it only applies to a limited set of circumstances, called Minkowski space-time, where mass has no effect on space-time. But mass does have an effect on space-time. It's called gravity. 
So Einstein thought for years until finally he came up with the general theory of until finally he came up with the general theory of relativity, which accounts for gravitational effects. The theory of general relativity describes the shape of space-time. What's the shape of space-time? We don't know. No, but you just said... Einstein the described the shape of space-time using a set of equations called the field equations. But these equations have an infinite set of solutions, all of which imply a different shape for space-time. All these solutions are constrained by the field equations, and there are some we can rule out because they don't line up with measurable phenomena, like the orbits of the planets. But that still leaves infinitely many possible solutions. So, is that the end of the vlog? No! Now we get to the fun part. Oh! <laughs> Kurt Girdle was. Well, you know who he is, Brian. Uh, he was a mathematician who, um, he came up with the incompleteness theorem. Penelope's favorite. We should vlog about that sometime. But not today. Today, we're going to skip 20 years ahead of the incompleteness theorem to 1949 when the American Physical Society put together a whole journal dedicated just to Einstein. And they invited Kurt Gödel to contribute. Now, for his contribution to the journal, Gödel devised a solution to the field equations that's consistent with every measurement we've ever taken. Gödel's solution allows for the existence of closed time-like curves. Now, if a particle is on a closed time-like curve, it can start out in one moment, and then, without ever traveling faster than light, it can come right back to that same moment. Like I said, there are infinite solutions to the field equations. But if Gödel's solution is right, if we're living in Gödel space-time, then, then we can travel back in time. I love you. I I love you too.